Ernest Hemingway once said that if you look at any great novel, any great story, and you start comparing two or three or five of the greatest stories of all time, that you're going to find that really all great writing boils down to one thing. He said it all boils down to poetry. By that he meant that even when we're free writing, we have to take such care and such precision in crafting our stories and choosing our words in listening to the meter of what we're doing, that it basically approaches the level of being poetry, even though we may be writing mainstream fiction. I think I agree with that in part. So as we start storytelling mastery, I'm going to be talking about what it is that makes a great story. But I'm not sure that even Hemingway quite caught all of it, because I'd, I'd have to say he's almost half right. I think poetry is half of it, but I also think that story is the other half. And we have to pay attention to both of those elements. So the story mastery class is going to consist of a number of assignments. There's several things that we have to do if you want to become a great writer. I wish I could say that I could boil it all down to eight easy lessons and you could go home and listen to me talk for 10 minutes on each lesson and you would instantly be a great storyteller. That's just not realistic. I like to liken it to you being sort of a, a television station. When you write a story, you are transmitting that story out to an audience. You're sending out signals. And your job as a writer is to send out a signal that's clear and strong so that people can get it. Your readers are sort of like television sets. They're just picking up what you send and they're trying to make sense of it. And some of them are not going to be very good. Some people have crummy televisions. Uh, they may be um, reading impaired for one reason or another. They may be that they have some sort of a uh, mental problem. They have uh, dyslexia, they have ADHD, so they become bad receptors for that reason. It may be that they're just not very adept at reading. They're eight years old and have just started reading. And even though they love reading, and they're all excited about it, they don't understand much more than about 60% of what they read. So your job is to try to go out and create a signal that these people are going to be able to understand and respond to. Now, you may think that you are sending out, for example, Star Wars. If you send out a weak signal, though, if you send out a signal that's not very strong, uh, the person who's trying to receive it is just going to get a bunch of fuzz on his screen. And he's going to look at it and he might see that this looks like it's Planet Nine from Outer Space instead of Star Wars. So you've got to worry about that as you're writing, that you're sending out good, clear, strong signals. So one of the very first things that we're going to tackle in writing mastery is clarity. How do you write clear prose? And this will require you to do some writing assignments. Now, there are a number of reasons to do writing assignments. One reason is that, first of all, I strongly believe that just like any other art, unless you practice your writing, you're not going to get very good. I can sit and lecture to people all day, and I know people who are what I call lecture addicts, okay? <laughs> They'll come to seminars and writing workshops, and they love talking about writing, but they don't actually like to practice it very much. Well, the problem with that is, is that if I teach you a principle and you just listen to it, after about a month, you will lose 92% of everything that I've told you. You'll just forget it because what's happened is, is you've stored it in your short-term memory. In order for you to take something out of your short-term memory and turn it into a long-term memory, you have to sit down and study it for an hour actually for about 32 to 48 minutes, depending upon what your ability is to learn. And so that's why I'm going to give you assignments that are each going to take roughly an hour to practice. So that as we start talking about principles of clarity, you'll have certain assignments. Now, I'll ask you to do the assignment. You will then send me the assignment. I will go ahead and critique your assignment and get the papers back to you. 
They won't be particularly long assignments. They won't necessarily be hard assignments. But they are things that I ask everybody to do. Now, each of you as students may be at different places. Some of you may have been writing for a long time. Some of you may have been brand new to writing. And so if you've been writing for a long time, you might just say, oh, Dave, I, I do all this automatically. I want to bow out on this one. And if that's what you want to do, that's OK. You can skip ahead to another assignment. But just be aware that I'm putting these assignments out there with everybody in mind, knowing that some people, I may be talking to the choir already here, preaching to the choir already, and, and you're, you're already going to be great at doing what I'm going to be asking you to do. But what I'm finding nowadays, as I look at writings from new writers, is that with e-publishing, there are a lot of people who are really excited about writing. They want to go out and publish their own books. And many times, they'll say, I don't want to have to wait for a publisher, an editor, and all these people to figure out that I'm great. I just want to go out and start making money now. I hear you know, success stories of people who've done it, and I'm going to go out and make my millions. And so many people are going out, and they're just not quite prepared yet. And they go out, and they publish, and that's OK. It's a learning experience for them. But ideally, what we'd like to do is get you prepared so that if you do decide to go with the major publisher route, that that option is open for you. So we want to get your, your mastery skills up to the level where you are imminently publishable, where nobody's going to be looking at you and saying, why, why is this guy out here putting out books? They will read your text and immediately know that you are ready. That's what we're trying to do, is we're trying to get you ready. More than that, this is a competitive business. And that means that you've got to create great art. Now, when I start talking about creating great art, that means that you've got to go beyond just being clear. You've got to have something in your arsenal. I often tell new writers that if they want to study writing, one of the best things to do is to begin studying poetry. And there's a number of reasons that I suggest that. First of all, if you study poetry, study other people's poetry, some of the great poets from you know, the 20th century, people like Yeats and Frost and Dylan Thomas and, and things like this, you'll learn to write with power and with grace. And also you'll learn to write with uh, as few words as possible. And that's really an important skill for a writer, is to learn to write beautifully. And so we're going to have you practice some exercises that will help you learn to write beautifully. But more than that, we as writers also need to get ourselves to the point where we actually recognize what is good. If you've only ever drank $3 bottles of wine, that may be all that you think wine is, is a $3 bottle of wine. You may never have tasted the really good stuff. If, if you've never tasted something great, you, you don't know what to compare it to. So if I gave you a taco and all you've ever had was the cheapest, you know, 25 cent tacos that you've got on special at Taco Bell, you might not know what a gourmet taco tastes like. Well, you need to lear learn as an artist what very fine writers write like, which means you have, to, you have to have some experience with them. And so we will have reading assignments for you to help educate your sensibilities, help you learn to see that, uh, gosh, this is what really great writers write like. Uh, this, is, this is how they speak. This is how they sound. How can I take my writing and move it up closer to that? How can I raise my level so that I'm competing at a higher level? So that's one of the other assignments we're going to have to have you do. Is there's going to have to be some reading assignments. Now, I'm not going to be able to check on whether you read your reading assignments. This is going to be for your own edification. But I will give you a reading assignment, and I'll ask you, hey, what do you think about it? This is, this is something that I want to get your feedback on. Sometimes you'll meet a writer that will change your life. You'll find an author that you love, that you want to emulate, that really speaks to you. And the next person that I put up there may do nothing for you. You may find that you're not interested in their work, their style, might be pleasing, but doesn't, doesn't really move you. And that's OK. The goal here is to really help you discover what it is that you like and what it is you're trying to do, to find artists that you can emulate 
And so we'll talk about how do you learn from a writer that you really like. And we'll have some exercises that we'll, we'll get into for that. Beyond all of that, if I'm a television station and I start putting out material, I start sending out signals for a movie, you as an audience have to be receptive to that movie. I am basically also a programming director. I've got to be in touch. Not, a, not only do I have to send out a clear, powerful signal, I have to send out something that's confidently made, something that really does tell a story that's going to intrigue people. So part of writing mastery is also understanding storytelling, story structure, story, uh, how twists work, how we create time bombs, how we handle all sorts of things like dialogue and this type of thing. So we're going we're gonna to have to have a lot of lessons that deal with that too. So what we're going to do with each of our lessons is this. Each week, you'll have a reading assignment, and you'll have a lecture that'll probably be a, a short lecture. Most of your material is going to actually be written in a written assignment where we'll have a lesson, and then we'll have some examples from people who have done that right, and then we will have you write your assignment and send it in for critique. So you'll have a little three or four part structure that you're going to have each week that you're going to, you're going to need to complete. Now you don't necessarily have to wait a week before you get started. If you want to jump ahead, I'm going to let you jump ahead because you know there may be a time when you're off, you're off work for a week and you really want to work on your writing. And so you decide, I want to go work on this course and take this entire course in one week. And I think that you should have that opportunity to do that. So I'm going to let you work ahead and you can work at your own pace at this and we'll just take your assignments as they come in. So in brief, that's what we're going to do in the Writing Mastery course. You're going to read, you're going to educate your tests, you're going to learn to write concisely, beautifully, powerfully, and you're going to learn how to create programming that people like.